Uh, welcome to the third installment of the Worldwide Center of Mathematics video series on Indian mathematical history. Today we'll be talking about Bhaskara II, who is considered by many to be medieval India's greatest mathematician. Bhaskara was born in the 12th century, and like Brahmagupta before him, he was a prominent astronomer, heading the Astronomical Observatory at Ujjain. His contributions to mathematics were often done for the purpose of mapping out uh, the paths of planets. Bhaskara's most notable uh, discoveries were in the field of calculus. Hundreds of years before Newton and Leibniz pioneered calculus in the Western world, Bhaskara examined instantaneous rates of change of planetary motion. Uh, he discovered that the paths of the planets followed the sine function and figured out that the instantaneous rate of change um, of the planet's motion was equal to the cosine of time. And he didn't realize it at the time, but he had stumbled upon the derivative of sine of t, which was cosine of t. He also wrote down an earlier version of Rolle's theorem, stating that if there existed a function f such that f of a equaled f of b equaled zero, then there would exist um, f prime of x equal to zero, um, where x lay in between uh, a and b. Uh, Bhaskara also contributed to algebra. He looked at quadratic and determinate equations, specifically equations of the form uh, a times x squared plus b equal to c times y squared, uh, where a, b, and c are all constants. Specifically, he looked at Pell's equation, um, which is p times x squared plus 1 um, equal to y squared, uh, where p is a constant. Uh, he, offered a solution, he offered solutions for a variety of values of p, including 61. Uh, hundreds of years later, uh, Fermat uh, posed this challenge, posed a challenge using this equation uh, with p valued at 61. And it took mathematicians at the time uh, years to solve it before, uh, um, before it was eventually solved by Brunker in 1658. However, Brunker's method was far more complicated than Bhaskara's. Uh, Bhaskara's, me uh, excuse me, Bhaskara's method was known as uh, the Chakravala method, um, which required very few steps um, and made these uh, complicated equations relatively easy to solve. Uh, while Bhaskara had many more contributions to math in a variety of fields, uh, the final contribution we'll talk about today is his proof of the Pythagorean theorem. So what we're going to do now is prove that um, Pythagorean's theorem um, works using uh, Bhaskara's method. Uh, so as you know, uh, the Pythagorean theorem states that um, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared for a right triangle with legs a and b and hypotenuse c. Um, so now we're just going to prove that the way uh, Bhaskara did that. Uh, so we have here um, is a square um, with side c um, and inscribed into the square are four right triangles. Um, with sides or legs A and B. Um, and so what we're going to do now is um, prove that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared using just this square. And we're going to do that um, by finding the area of the square. Um, so there are two ways of doing this. Um, the first way is pretty easy. Um, it's just the area formula of a square. Um, the sides of the square are C. And so the first way to find the area is c squared. And now uh, for the second method, we look at what's inside the square itself. Uh, so we have um, the four triangles. And in these triangles, we know um, all the sides. So that's one part of the area. Um, and so we'll just write down what the area of the four triangles equal to. Uh, so because it's a right triangle, uh, we know that the height is equal to A, base equal to B. Um, and so it's just base times height times one half. Um, so that's one half AB. And then we account for the fact that there are four triangles. So the area of all the triangles ends up equaling uh, two AB. Now we figured out this. Uh, we need to figure out the area of um, the quadrilateral inside. Um, so, as you can see from the diagram, um, uh, these are all right angles um, because they're all on lines and we've proven that these are right triangles. 
uh, so we can say this is um, at least a rectangle. Uh, but then we can observe that um, all of the sides are equal to uh, B, which is this long side, uh, minus uh, A, which is the shorter side. Um, so because there are four right angles, uh, it's quadrilateral, you know, all the sides are the same length, um, we can solve the area as if it's a square. And so the sides, as we said, um, is equal to uh, B minus A, and so now we'll just uh, square that and see what we get. Um, so now that we've solved that, <clears throat> we can see that area is equal to just B minus A squared. A simple foiling it through, we see that the area is equal to uh, b squared minus 2ab plus a squared. And so now we have uh, the area of the square uh, where we just look at the side c and we look at the things on the inside. And so now we can set uh, these two things equal to each other. And so doing that, uh, we take the uh, method one. Uh, c squared, we set that equal to area of the triangles, which is equal to 2ab, uh, plus the area of this inner square, which is equal to b squared minus 2ab plus a squared. Um, and you can see that uh, the area of the triangles cancels out with the area of the squares, the two ab's cancel out. And the final answer is that, or the final result is that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Uh, thank you so much for watching our series on Indian mathematical history. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out other installments of the series. Thank you.